Today we're taking a first look at the Pole Tyval. Today somebody shipped me a banana from Finland. <laughs> Boy, somebody was having a bad day at the shipping company. I am really scared of what's gonna be inside of this. I know what it is, it's a pull tie ball. Today we're gonna take a first look at it. Hopefully it's not bent. I can't imagine anything being straight in this box. It's twisted this way. It looks like a smiley face. You know, this came from halfway across the world. This is the worst package I've received. Definitely not Pole's fault. DHL and USPS, somewhere along the way, someone looks like they dropped a forklift pallet on this thing. It was so bad, the USPS guy took a picture of it to say, we're probably gonna be filing a damage claim on that one by the, the looks of that box. So let's open it up, see how bad it is. So excited to get this frame in. I know so many of you are excited too. Oh, this poor bike. It's well packaged. Holy cow, that's a beefy head tube. Oh, we got some paint blems on here. That's too bad. I'll show you some close-ups. Looking for dents from the shipping guys. The video makes it look like a neon canary yellow, but it's more of a golden orange, like my Banshee Paradox. I'm not super impressed with the look of the welds. And as we all know, looks don't tell you how strong a weld is, but they're kind of sloppy welds. I haven't seen welds this sloppy for a while. They're okay. I'm sure they're going to be strong enough, but it doesn't look like the Canfield or my RSD middle child. They're just kind of eh, mediocre welds. In here we got some paint blems, some chipping on the dropout. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is there. If it was dirty when it was painted or something got stuck to it. We got a pinhole in there where the weld doesn't go all the way through. Bummer. Looks like it's ED coated, I'm guessing, by the black coating inside. Yeah, this has got to be coated for corrosion protection. All right, let's throw it on the scale, see what it weighs. Frame came in at 6.4 pounds. That's with the seat collar, headset cups installed, and the rear axle. That's actually not bad for what this is. I thought it'd be closer to seven. So pretty good. Nice job, Pole. This is a size small. Pole uses the smaller 30.9 seat tube. A lot of people are doing that for a more compliant ride feel. At least that's what they're telling me. I've had compliant rides out of a 30.9 and a 31.6, but I'm willing to go to a smaller post if it means it rides a little bit more comfortable. So this is a size small, but it's the same as most companies medium. This small has a 450 mil reach. It's meant for a 140 fork. It's got a 64.5 degree head angle. We've got a threaded bottom bracket and the chain stays 436 millimeters. One really cool thing that Pull does is their chain stays grow from size to size. We should see that on every bike. I don't know why we don't. It makes no sense that the rear center is the same from an extra small to an extra large and then the front center is the only part that changes. That makes no sense to me. It's got a pretty long seat tube. It is a straight seat tube, which is nice, but man, this whole gusset with a long seat tube, I think that trend needs to die. I would love to have this gone and have a three inch shorter seat tube and be able to run a 180, even 200 mil dropper. For a hardcore hardtail like this, it makes a lot of sense. I don't know why on a small, we have a 440 mil seat tube, whatever. We'll see how that plays out. And if I'm going to have to go down to a 125 dropper, which is pretty lame these days, or if I can fit my 150. I'm a little bummed at the paint chips and the little blems and the welds just don't look amazing. For an $880 bike frame, I would expect that to look real good and to be perfect, and it's not. I'm really disappointed with the finish on this. Just doesn't look high end. Here we got a paint drip that just doesn't look great. I can see like lines in here where it's thinner or thicker or not very smooth or even. I'd expect a lot better for an $880 frame. The paint looks like it needs another coat. It just looks pretty thin everywhere. It could just be the matte clear coat on it. I love matte frames, but it almost looks like the paint didn't get full coverage. 
I realize I'm being picky here, but it's an $880 frame. I'm going to be pickier than if this was a $300 frame. There's an extra little dimple in there. That little shadow. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to match the quality of an $880 frame. I think it's overpriced for the quality it's getting. Now, I get that small companies have a hard time meeting the budgets of the big companies, and I respect that, but man, just a little disappointing. If I paid $80 for this and this came in, with the knowledge I've got, seeing all the other frames I've seen, I would be disappointed. That said, if it rides great, none of that stuff really matters, but that's the purpose of a first look, is to dive in deep and explore all the things that you can't find out just looking at the website. All right, let's build this thing up. This is my 30.9, 9.8 fall line R. 9.8 is a big friend of this channel and I couldn't do it without them. I really appreciate their support. I only partner with companies that I love their products. And I love these 9.8 fall line R droppers. They're my favorite droppers. These ports look good. Comes with some frame plugs. I much prefer it when companies use the rubber plugs like these instead of the plastic ones that get brittle. So thank you, Pole, for doing that. It's nice. They've got the big oversized ports so you can fish it out with some needle nose. This bike's a 29er. It can also fit 27.5 plus in there. Let's see if it'll fit 29 by 26. I've got a 29 by 26 specialized ground control tire here. Oh my goodness, no problem. Tons of clearance for a 26. This is an interesting frame. It says 142 slash 148. So that means boost or non-boost. But that's cool. If you have non-boost wheel sets, you can still upgrade to this bike. Okay, we're clearing with the 2.6. In here, probably got five mil clearance. Hard to show, plenty of clearance up here. On this side, we probably got closer to three mil clearance. That is tight. So I probably don't recommend 2.6s if you ride in mud. It's fully external routing like I love on a good steel hardtail. I think it always should be external routing. We've got a tall, head tube. This should have a nice tall stack just looking at the head tube and how much is sticking out down here. We do have a zero stack cup pressed in here so that takes 12 mils off what a lot of other steel frames have and it has that conical head tube. Most steel frames have the straight 44 mil head tube where you press on the cup that's wider in the bottom but this one is conical. A lot of people love that look. I don't have a preference either way. I think it looks cool though. So there's some really cool things Pull's done on this. For instance, they've already pressed in the headset cups for you. And if you're building up your own bike, that means one less tool that you have to buy. And a headset press is not a cheap tool. So good on Pull. All right, time to throw the fork on. This is designed for a 140 fork, so that's what I'm gonna put on it. That is a long steer tube. There's a chance if you're reusing a fork, you've probably cut it too short and it may not work with this. I like long steer tubes, it gives it a nice tall feeling up front, but like if you're coming from a Yeti or a Santa Cruz or a Specialized, they're a good two inches shorter. So this is the coolest little tool, this little toe peak, the ratchet stick. It uh, makes builds like this super easy because everything I need is in my pocket. Keeps me from having to run back and forth to the workbench and it's a ratchet, which is really nice. This looks good. I like how it looks like, you know, you don't have a whole bunch of spacers up here because you don't because the steer tube is so long. That should have a really tall stack. I've really only got about five mils to adjust the stem up or down. So up front, we're running a Cane Creek Helm Mark II. This is my all time favorite fork. I love this thing. Bars, we're running One Up's carbon bars. I'm not affiliated with One Up. I just really like their bars a lot. So uh, I, they're super cheap, they're super light, and they have a little bit of vibration reduction. I don't know, it's hard to tell, but they do feel like the most comfortable bars I've ridden. Granted, when you trim them down, you lose some of that leverage, so the narrower your bars, the stiffer they get anyway. But uh, I like them, they're, they're my go-to bars when I'm building a bike for myself. And the stem is a 9.8 stout. This is the stem I run on almost every single build. I love this stem. It's got titanium bolts. 
just a beautiful stem. It's also one of those stems that you snug the top down all the way and then you torque the bottom part. If you've been out of the mountain bike world for a little while, that's how most of the high-end stems are coming these days. Back in the old days, you tighten them evenly in crisscross pattern and get the gap the same on top and bottom, but you don't do that anymore. Not on stems like this, at least. Brakes or SRAM Guide Ultimates. I like these brakes. Back here, we've got an IS mount. That's where there's these two holes and they're not threaded. I think people run IS, I think it saves them money because they don't have to run tooling to thread the frames. And if they messed up on some threading, uh, the whole frame scrapped. So that's just my theory, I don't know. We've been seeing a lot more companies switch to post mount, which I like, that means fewer adapters, but whatever. Just another adapter to run. All right, this is coming together. This color's really growing on me. The more I see this, the more I like it. It looks really good now. Two years ago, Wheels Manufacturing gave me these to try out, this bottom bracket, and it's been on probably 20 different demo bikes. And I just keep swapping it from one to the next. This one has the angular contact bearings, and I'm a huge fan. It's proved extremely reliable, extremely durable, and one cool thing about them is you can buy the individual parts. So if the bearings go out, you can just buy the bearings and not have to buy new cups. I like that. That's less waste and less money out of your pocket. So thank you Wheels Manufacturing for sending these to test. They're made in the U.S. Awesome, awesome bearings. You can't buy them direct, so you have to get them from a bike shop. And I think that's cool too. If they were just regular bearings like skateboard bearings where you've got the inner race, the balls, and then the outer race... When you're sitting on the axle, it's putting pressure on the lower balls. Well, angular contact spreads the contact over all of the ball bearings so that no matter how much weight you're pushing down, it's putting even pressure on all the balls, which keeps it rolling smoother. I really like that. For the drivetrain, we're going with MicroShift Advent X. This is my favorite budget drivetrain, and it's the best place to save money on a build. And the performance is just fine for me. I like it better than any of the Shimano 12 speed stuff. I like it better than SRAM SX. I'm not affiliated with MicroShift. I paid full price for this, which was super cheap. I think this was like $60 for the derailleur. The cassette's like 65 and the shifter is like 27. Super cheap drivetrain. It's got a nice wide range. I think it's an 11 to 48, plenty wide. The spacing's fine in between it. It's durable. It's cheap. If I ever did bust a derailleur, you know, it's 60 bucks and I haven't busted a derailleur yet. And it's lighter than Shimano XT 12 speed. So simpler, thicker chain, stronger, shifts just fine. And the whole package is like 140 bucks, I want to say. That's really, really hard to beat. So it's what I've been using on a lot of my personal bikes. Now, if I were going for a full on sky's the limit budget i'd be running uh, sram eagle x01 because i love that drivetrain or even 11 speed x01 i would love that i don't need a 50 or a 52 tooth i don't like the new wide range sram stuff those 52 tooths that's a big jump from uh, one to two and it just feels huge and i don't really love it plus with all the single speeding i've been doing i'm almost never in my three lowest gears anyway so i can get a smaller cassette all right, so yeah, we're gonna be putting some Advent X on this. Some people might think that's cheaping out on an otherwise amazing build. Try this first. You'd be a surprise at how good this shifts. For grips for me, it's a no brainer. It's the Ergon GD1s. They're not a sponsor. They sent me these to try out along with a couple others. I have probably tried out 40 different grips and these are far and above my favorite. They're the downhill grips. I don't race downhill but uh, I really love them. I don't have to grip as hard. I get less hand fatigue. I run them on every single bike that I own and companies are welcome to keep sending me more grips. It's gonna be really tough to beat these. Ergon does a fantastic job on their grips. So I'll be putting those on just like uh, every other bike I own. I like the indexing. I like the marks that show you which way is up. I like where the the little ring attaches where the bolt is, it's out of the way. It seems like a grip's a grip, but holy cow, it makes a big difference when they think of all the little things. 
For my wheels, I'm gonna be running a set of Hunt Trail Wides. These have 2.3 inch tires on them, and I think the Hunt Enduro Wide would probably be a better fit for this bike, and I do have a set of those. But these Hunt Trail Wides are my control variable when I'm testing frame stiffness. I know exactly how these wheels ride, and I ride them across a variety of hardtails so I can see how comfortable that rear end is. If I were to stick a big 2.6 inch tire on the Enduro Wides, I think the 2.6 tire would mute it enough that I'd have a hard time discerning if it was the frame or the wheels. So I'm gonna start with these and then I may switch to those two sixes down the road once I know what this frame feels like. That's the only way I know how to get an accurate feel for how supple a frame is compared to other hardtails. If I'm always running different wheels from bike to bike, it's gonna feel different. And I'm real familiar with how these feel. This will be a good test. These are 29 inch wheels by 2.3, specialized ground controls in the rear and specialized eliminator in the front, grid casing on both. I love this tire setup for the desert. Very fast rolling, but very grippy. There's lots of room in this dropout. It actually feels like it's like 150 wide. So then it's easy to get the wheel in because you're not fighting the springiness of the frame. Here she is all built up. The more time I spent building this up, the more I fell in love with the color and the bike in general. And my disappointment of the box, the way it came in, dissipated a little bit. I don't think the frame's bent. I might take it into the shop, see if they can uh, measure it, make sure it's aligned okay. We're gonna ride it, see if there's anything funky. I think it's okay. A couple things I really like about this. They did a great job on cable routing. And cable routing is one of those small things that you don't realize how much you care about it until it's done wrong. And good cable routing goes unnoticed and bad cable routing drives you crazy. They did a really good job. I love how there's no sharp bends in any of the cables. A Little bit here, but that's pretty much expected on droppers. This is kind of a funky angle, mainly because my cable's too long, that's my fault. But since I swap droppers from bike to bike, I leave them long so they fit every bike. One bummer, it doesn't come with the bolts to mount the water bottles. So you do have chances of water getting in there. And that's just another part you have to track down. Uh, I'd say 95% of the frames I get in these days have the bolts in there. A little bit of a bummer there. I like that it has ISCG tabs so you could run a chain guide or a bash guard. I love the threaded bottom bracket. I like how much clearance there is around the tires. Uh, there's significantly more clearance on the drive side than this side, which could be a bent frame. I don't know. I need to find out. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled about the welds, but I'm sure it's plenty strong and I'm excited to go take this thing out. Some unique things. That head tube is super long. So if you're swapping a fork over from another bike, you're going to need to make sure that steer tube is long enough. I keep my steer tube super long and I only had room to run a single spacer under there. Now it does have the taller cap over the headset here so you could run a lower cap there to get a little bit more but I think that might be a problem for a lot of people it's a long bike it looks aggressive it looks rowdy it looks really cool let's see how much it weighs what do I think hey that's not quite as heavy as I thought I'm gonna guess 31.8 pounds let's go find out all right, it came in at 30.1 pounds. Not bad. There's only one thing left to do. That's listen to this hub. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. 